This podcast is sponsored by Affinity Recruiting and Consulting. 94% of small businesses and nonprofits disappear before their 10th birthday. The top 6% survive and thrive for two reasons, talent and strategy. Affinity's team of experts provides talent acquisition, outsourced HR, strategic planning, and fundraising support. Long story short, they fix the problems that cause small businesses and nonprofits to fail. If you could use help with recruiting, consulting, or HR, email their founder, Rob Murphy, to start a conversation today. You can also visit them online at affinitytoday.com, and both of those links are in the episode notes. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond Rockets. Today, I sit down to talk with the CEO of Downtown Huntsville, Inc., whose mission is to create a vibrant, diverse, and economically sustainable downtown Huntsville. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking with me today. As I mentioned at the start, uh, you are the CEO of Downtown Huntsville, Inc. Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what, it, what, what your day-to-day looks like running and operating a nonprofit here in downtown Huntsville? Great. Well, thanks for the invitation to join you. Looking forward to the conversation. So, uh, Downtown Huntsville, Inc., we're a nonprofit and our main objective is to advocate for a more dynamic downtown because we know that all of our competing peer cities, almost every dynamic city has a dynamic downtown. And so if we want to compete with them, we need to be able to compete on a level playing field. So started in 2013 and really the goal is every day we wake up to try to make our downtown more interesting uh, and more of a recruiting for workforce uh, retention um, and new workforce. So really, that's what our scope is. We're, we're basically the ambassadors for downtown. So I read that prior to coming to Huntsville, you actually <clears throat> previously served as the director of city development for Montgomery, Alabama, as well as you were a consultant for over 30 different cities on downtown and urban redevelopment strategies. Can you tell me a little bit about what drew you to Huntsville and what was your background in it? Because I know even prior to Montgomery, you were actually a professor of law at the University of Tennessee. Oh, I went to law school at Tennessee. Okay. I was a professor in Montgomery. Oh, wow. Okay. At Faulkner University. Interesting. So, okay. Yeah. So, that, I mean, the, the, the whole full scope, like how did you end up here and kind of what, like, all that. Yeah, it's pretty circuitous. <laughs> uh, practiced law for a while, then, then taught law while I was teaching law, ended up teaching property law and land development law. Okay. And so it kind of naturally got me involved in those projects from the legal side. And then Mayor Strange, Todd Strange was the mayor of Montgomery at the time, wanted to uh, bifurcate the planning and development department into a planning department and a development department. Okay. Because they kind of have different objectives. And so uh, himself and the deputy mayor at the time, Jeff Downs, who's now the city manager in Vestavia, doing a great job there, um, they recruited me to become the first ever uh, city development director for the, I mean, downtown Montgomery, or for the city of Montgomery as a whole. Okay. So it was a citywide position, but really a lot of the emphasis was on the downtown. Again, same concept. Downtown is often the first place a lot of people see, maybe other than the airport. Mm-hmm. And so you need a strong downtown to compete. Um, But citywide, we also did a lot of projects there. So that really was a a really fun project, but it was citywide. And I started to find myself really most interested in the downtown component of that. And Mm -hmm. downtown Montgomery at the time was just going great. I mean, it still is great. And there were some things that were just so exciting. So when an opportunity to focus exclusively on a downtown, in this case, Huntsville came up, um, I found that really appealing. So what was like the initial pitch for you? What, 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 was it a tough pitch? Like, did you like, what was your impression of Huntsville at that time? Cause I mean, Huntsville's changed so much over the, over the, since 2013, since you've been here, what was your impression of Huntsville? And like, what was your knowledge about Huntsville at that time in Montgomery? Yeah. I, I what I knew is I knew space and rocket, right. <laughs> and I had done a program called leadership Alabama. So we'd been up here before for a retreat and, uh, stayed at the embassy when it was relatively new. So I, I knew that downtown Huntsville had a lot of great assets. I, the park, Montesano Mountain, you could see beautiful homes mm-hmm. in Twickenham and Old Town. You could see that there wasn't a lot of activity, but there were a lot of pieces in place that if you could activate them, like a jigsaw puzzle, it looks yeah. all jumbled up. <laughs> but when you put it together, it looks great. Um, and I was like, oh, this has really got a lot of potential here. Yeah. So... Fast forward several years later when someone reached out to me if I was interested in applying for the position. I said, I remember that place. That could be a (laughs) really awesome place. If you can activate it, realize its potential, it can be one of the most dynamic middle-sized downtowns in America. Yeah. And and we think it's become that yeah i mean i guess like almost the rest is history really i mean over the i mean since as we know the downtown scene like you said in in huntsville looked so much different and acted much different in 2013 when you moved here what were some of the hopes for downtown so that it could look like and feel like and what were some of the first steps that dhi took to achieve that first thing is we had to reintroduce locals to downtown okay 
I think there were some established on the, down there, some really good ones, um, some restaurants and things like that. But by and large, downtown felt like it had been largely forgotten by a large chunk of the region mm-hmm. and people nearby throughout. It wasn't a destination downtown, other than if you had to go to the courthouse or maybe <laughs> City Hall. And so we started trying to reintroduce. So we did um, some food truck rallies, uh, worked on some other events like the downtown putt-putt course, which by their nature were designed you know, to draw people there, but also cause people to walk around and be like, wow, look at these beautiful buildings. Or what are, this park is really nice, Big Spring Park. Or So we kind of like had a dual goal to bring people down there to you know, enjoy food trucks or enjoy the putt-putt course or things like that, but also get them to explore downtown when they were here for the event. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I, like you said, I mean, it wasn't – I growing, I grew up, grew up here my entire life, and downtown was not something you really went to after after dark, and there really was only a few places that, we, that I would go to. I mean, my aunt lives on Eustis. We'd always go to Harrison Brothers. There used to be a Wild Rose Cafe on the square, like kind of where Poppy area is and Jack Brown's. Great breakfast places, but th- I mean, it's it's definitely seen so much that's changed since 2013, since you've been here, even in like t- 2010 to 2013. I mean, there's been so much, so much change. Um, and those, what was the initial response for those first campaigns that DHI was trying to do with the food trucks and the putt putt? With did you see an overwhelming amount of response, or did it take a lot of time just to kind of get the word out, get people to kind of say, "Hey, downtown's a place I can visit and a place I can hang out and and, and be entertained." So, I uh, remember that very first food truck rally. It was either September, October of 13, the fall of 13. And we had some food truck vendors and um, said, hey, can you, you want to park on right behind the, uh, what was the old Regions Bank building? Now mm-hmm. is the Broadway Group's headquarters. That's where we were officing at the time. Um, and so, want to park behind there. We knew there was a concert. There was some country concert at the VBC. So, we thought, well, maybe people will be looking for something yeah. pre-concert. And we lined them all up. We had no idea because it was a it was a free to attend event. You had yeah. to buy at the food trucks, but we didn't sell tickets, so we had no idea if anyone was going to show <laughs> up. I was like, okay, well, let's see if this yeah. works, right? And so, um, and we we vaguely got permission from the city. It was more like forgiveness rather than permission. We're like, okay, let's hope this works. <laughs> and right when it got started, I think around five o'clock or so, um, we just saw like a sh- the the band started, and we saw a stream of people start coming down Fountain Circle, mm. and I was like. Oh, wow. There's people here. Yeah. I mean, where did they come from? And um, I think it was something new at the Mm -hmm. time. Food trucks were very novel here. And people just hung out. They got their cupcake from Sugar Bell or they (laughs) got their food from the Busteron or all the other vendors there. But what I could tell is people, when they got their food or their um, cupcake or their, I think, Blue Pants Brewery had some beer there too. (laughs) probably also illegally, but it is what it is. We were just trying to, you know, yeah. do things that were um, kind of a little fun, disruptive. And so people started exploring and hanging out and just, I was like, okay, if you create an attraction, this is an attractive place to be because yeah. the buildings are nice. It's safe. It's clean. And people were really just walking down to the park and uh, enjoying themselves and, and listening to the music. So um, that was, that's, uh, we learned that, okay, there's potential here, not just in the buildings, but in people wanting to interact with the buildings. Because if they want to come behind a building in a little, you know, slanted parking lot for, <laughs> to eat, you know, burritos, they probably want to engage more in downtown. Yeah. So that kind of was a, a teaser for us. Yeah, it was like the, in, the initial spark that kind of led to all these other events that you would end up doing. How has that mindset shifted from running events and engaging with the downtown community now versus what it would look like in 2013 when you first started? Yeah, so now we uh, don't, DHI as an organization uh, supports more events in in terms of collaborates on more events than we actually conduct ourselves. We still have some of our core events, uh, Tinsel Trail, Food Truck Rallies, Art Walk. But early on, there wasn't a lot of interest in in holding a lot of races downtown or a lot of third-party events downtown. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we had to do it ourselves. Now... It's not uncommon. Someone reaches out. There's a a group that's having a Jeep Wrangler club. They're going to come and do a a drive-in. And, you know, we said, okay, we'll we'll help with the permit. We'll walk you through, make introductions. So now we may, we more provide a a logistical support role. Because ultimately, you get the more different people at different organizations doing events downtown, you get uniqueness. It doesn't, it's not a homogeneous type thing. It's not like our events probably have a DHI feel to it because we're planning it. 
where you get a bunch of different people planning it when they move the, the heart walk downtown. Okay. It was just a different group. It was a huge group, but it was a different group and um, they had a great event. And so we are seeing more and more groups come in and say, Hey, what can we do downtown? Whether it's inside one of the event venues or even outdoors in the park or something like that. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I would imagine over the last nine years, there's been events and like things that you've put on and kind of tried that maybe didn't work. How do you kind of go about that when you, when you think this event, this, this concept that you might have or something is going to be amazing. And then maybe it just doesn't hit as well as you do. How do you kind of completely shift and say, maybe we just did either did it wrong or maybe we shouldn't do that. How do you kind of go about that? There's a term I like to say is we, we have to be transparent with ourselves. You know, it seems a little oxymoronic, <laughs> but we have to like, if something doesn't work, really look at why was that not popular? It doesn't mean that, you know, the event concept was bad. It could mean that, or it may have meant that we didn't promote it right, or maybe um, it was the wrong time. It should have been a different day or a different time of the day. And so, uh, fortunately, most of our events have, you know, hit the bullseye and been very popular. But there's a few I look back on, and I was like, okay, um, we were transparent with ourselves and been like, okay, we thought that was a good idea. <laughs> the three or four of us did. The rest of the world didn't, okay? Yeah. And so we shouldn't be, I mean, we tried, um, but also we were transparent with ourselves so we know that, okay, not every idea that we thought was a great idea has been one, and so let's try something different. Maybe we tweak it or maybe we just say... That's not going to work. Yeah. I, th I think one of the coolest projects I think that DHI has done to connect the community as well as small businesses uh, is your downtown trails, which you now have five different ones ranging from coffee to beer and cocktails and even art trails. How did this idea for these trails come to be and what was the initial response from the community? Yeah, that's that's been probably one of the favorite things um, that we've done. It's We thought it'd be successful and it's, you know, exceeded it multiple times over. So the concept was this. We had a concentration. At, the, at first, it was the downtown Huntsville Craft Beer Trail. We had a concentration um, of breweries in the downtown area, both in the core and the surrounding districts. We said, "As you know what? When you go into a town, brewers are very local in nature usually. Okay, so And a lot of people from out of town will go to a, a downtown or a brewery and just kind of learn the local scene because a lot of them have music, yeah. restaurants, things like that. And so rather than just having to d discover at the time maybe seven different ones, what we said is what if we just loosely organize them all on a trail card, almost like a scavenger hunt. And so they all have their own identity, but we would encourage people to say, hey, when you come here to visit or if you're a local or you're new to the community, here's a way to explore all seven of these. And it did two things. First of all, it created an organized way to experience these great destinations. Because, again, breweries – are about the beer, but they're about the experience oh, just as much. For sure. But it also, this is one of the uh, silver linings that has been, for all of our trails, it then allowed the different breweries who on some level compete, but ultimately collaborate. We think that, now it's, I mean, there's been examples where, the, you know, weren't great late relationships, but we have a craft beer trail fest and everyone's participating that can. There's one brewery that doesn't have the right license to do so but and they'll all be in the same patio together collaborating even though they'll compete for customers during other days of the week but having our downtown establishments collaborate and develop those relationships where you know they don't just ruthlessly you know attack each other or yeah. try to like but say you know what we can all what's that rising tide lifts all boats and really believe that and we've seen it in action so the trails for the guest create a level of organization you can find all the concentration of coffee trails or cocktail establishments mm -hmm. but also the establishments it allows them an opportunity to collaborate so it's a win-win yeah and i i think what's cool is that like it, it almost raises the level of of uh, execution for these breweries and these coffee shops and these other the restaurants that have the cocktail trail because as they see these other people that you said that they they kind of do compete in some sense but they're also like a part of the community and if they're able to build the audience and build this trail up they're able to kind of get the word out where People that always visit Honest, for instance, um, maybe would never go down a gold sprint, but they'll see it on the card and they may go down a gold sprint and they'd be like, wow, like, I had no idea this existed. Like if I'm ever down here, I'll definitely like, there's all these different connections that people make because the community is also all supportive of this sort of event. Well, and what's interesting is we've never had an establishment that didn't want to participate in a trail. We have some parameters about what it requires to, um, to be a craft coffee or a craft cocktail, or craft beer uh, participant. But we actually have people asking to join. Usually when a shop opens, they're like, hey, can, how, how are we eligible? 
And that really shows me that, um, again, some of the establishments, there might, there's always going to be personality differences in our world. But all in all, they support each other. And by supporting each other, I think it provides and lifts customer service for everyone. For sure. Yeah. And I, I, I think what's, and some other things that y'all do, besides just these amazing trails downtown, um, is you also host a variety of other exciting events every year. Can we talk a little bit about some of these events that will be taking place this fall and winter leading up to the first of the year? Uh, and I know there's, there's so many different seasonal events that you do that really take place this fall and winter. Yeah, so um, not sure when this is posting, uh, but in September will be the return of the Downtown Open, okay. which is our 30 or so uh, putt-putt holes, uh, temporary putt-putt holes, and it's a quirky thing that you know we've seen <laughs> more and more cities replicate. We just have a, a vendor build the uh, the holes and uh, basically sell the holes to sponsors, and they'll decorate them usually with their brand and make them fun, and we put them down there, and you have balls and putters and cards. It's free to participate. Uh, and then we'll find other events, movies in the park return in uh, September, and then Art Walk continues, our night market, which has been a fabulous yeah, new it's, event. It's been an amazing event. It's every fourth Friday through uh, the fourth Friday of October. And so all of these events continue. The food trucks continue. And then um, Tinsel Trail takes off on Black Friday. So that's a traditional launch date. So the fall is one of the best times to be downtown. It's, it's weather's wonderful. Yeah. It's dry. <laughs> so that's helpful. And so... Um, Every first, second, third, and fourth Friday, there will be something unique in downtown Huntsville to participate in. So one thing that I also find that's super interesting is the eight districts of Huntsville you highlight and the places you can dine, shop, and play in each. How important is it for you to not only highlight downtown and what's happening on the square and what most people associate with downtown, but also expand your areas of involvement to areas outside of that? So I like to use the example, if you go to a Nashville Sounds game in downtown Nashville, people say, I'm going to downtown Nashville, going to the AAA baseball. Well, technically you're in the Germantown neighborhood, but it's all kind of connected to some degree. Yeah. Um, they're not legal boundaries like a city or a school mm -hmm. district or a county. And so what we say is, you know, if the parkway wasn't put where it was put, if the parkway was put a mile to the west, you know, a lot of that area in Low Mill and Campus 805 and things like that, they would be naturally connected. The parkway creates an unnatural, you know, man-made difference. Same with 565. I mean, getting from downtown to here at Lincoln Mill, that's super convenient. There's bike lanes, all this kind of um, uh, activity, but there's an interstate going above and it's just kind of a little bit disruptive. Yeah. And so we say is, um, if you have a strong downtown, all the areas kind of lift each other up. And so in Nashville, right across I-40 is East Nashville, which is a really cool, interesting hip, part of it's no longer east nashville really because nashville goes many yeah. miles eastern but that's where it was originally east nashville so we talk about west huntsville the area around stove house and campus 805 you know the western edge of huntsville is i-65 yeah. in limestone county but that's still historically um the west huntsville area and you can easily bike or walk down there and now we're going to have this um sky bridge and the connector going across there it's all going to seamlessly come together and so we think that the districts that really kind of surround the downtown, they naturally interact with each other because of the proximity and uh, um, the different assets. So if I wanted to, you know, if it was a nice day, I could have hopped on a bike share from the DHI office right nearby and rode a greenway or a bike lane all the way up here. Yeah. And I, th I think that's, I think what's interesting too, is that like these other things that you do, like the trails we talked about has connected these areas and these communities together. And so it ultimately becomes kind of like your role to kind of, engage and support these communities as well. One community that I thought was really interesting and I'm excited to kind of see what it happens in Huntsville, but I saw it on your website as kind of a part of the districts was the John Hunt area. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little, little bit about like kind of what's going on? I mean, I think most people that are listening probably know a little bit, but I mean, there's probably so much more that you can probably share a little bit about what's happening in that area. Well, again, John Hunt um, Park, you know, the largest park, probably the largest park, certainly um, the most diverse opportunities from sand volleyball to running to the, the new skate park and ice hockey and all that kind of stuff going on. I mean, 30 plus Olympic sports can be played in that area. Um, that is proximate wise. I mean, just a couple of miles from the core of downtown. Now there's the parkway and things like that. It looks, it may feel further than it is, but it's really um, adjacent to downtown. And so one of the things we realized that, you know, there's people that go to uh, events in John Hunt that stay at the downtown hotels and eat at the downtown restaurants. But then John Hunt itself, with Nashville Soccer Club bringing their 
um, Major League Soccer Next Pro Team, uh, essentially their their second team to here, and it's going to be based at the old Joe Davis, which is renovated, twenty plus million dollar renovation. It's going to be one of the nicest um, uh, event venues, outdoor event venues anywhere in the southeast in terms of uh you know it's going to be the home for the soccer team but it's also going to be available for high school football outdoor concerts you know a variety of things and so that's the anchor there then there's private development the stadium commons that's going around there's going to be hotels developed john hunt park and the district that area there up and down lehman ferry i predict in five years will be one of the most desirable places to live work and play anywhere in the state of alabama if not um frankly in the southeast yeah i mean and like and there's like there's already so many different sort of like brews and stuff coming in that area i mean fractals over there back 40 is recently yep. announced on the corner and so that area like you said the, the whole um, what people know is lehman ferry i think is going to be a whole new transition for what it's going to be like you said in five years lehman ferry has the potential to be one of the most interesting activated streets in the city of huntsville because first of all it's a city street so as opposed to a state highway or a federal highway the city has more control how to you know put sidewalks in and things like that it's a, more of a local mm-hmm. decision but it also basically connects drake to airport road johnson road you know so it's not this major thoroughfare that you got to move traffic so the major thoroughfare is right next door the parkway <laughs> right and so you have the ability right now people are like well that's you know but put wide sidewalks on both sides put street trees put benches the buildings will then start building to the street um, and you'll be able to walk from back 40 to a MLS next pro match or a high school football match or a concert at, at Joe Davis. And it's all right there. You have the ice rink. I mean, it's, it's really a street that if done right can become one of the most walkable, interesting streets. And then you have greenways behind it right there, the spring branch mm-hmm. greenway, super excited. And all of that will be connected to downtown through greenways and the sky bridge. Wow. I mean, like it's, it's, crazy just to see this transformation as far as what downtown is and what it's becoming. I mean, downtown as, as a whole is, is expanding way beyond whatever, where I ever imagined it would be. Um, in the role that you are, you're basically acting as a visionary, I would say. Not only are you researching projects that have worked in other cities, but making sure that they will work in the Huntsville community. How do you go about that process? And we talked a little bit about it before, but did you always think that you'd do something like this? This would be your job one day? When I was taking my first law school exam, I wasn't thinking about <laughs> running a downtown nonprofit, but um, but I'm glad I did. And 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 the the skills I learned in law school and practicing law, actually, the analytical skills are still use a lot today. So I'm glad I went to law <laughs> school. Um, you know, one of the things that's important, and our organization, our board of directors, have been real supportive, is to go to other places, walk other downtowns, some larger, some smaller, but just kind of try to find out what's working and what's not working in other downtowns. And so uh, I've spent, I try once a month to go to a different downtown, Um, even during the pandemic, because we were seeing how other downtowns were responding to the pandemic. Uh, And so what you do is by going there, if you just read about it, or if you watch a PowerPoint or a video about it, yeah, you'll learn something. But being on the ground, walking the streets, walking, I mean, miles and miles and miles, and just trying to learn from the best practices and sometimes worst practices in these cities, and then see how we could adapt them to our unique downtown and what makes so I like to I say sometimes I like to go and steal other people's ideas in <laughs> downtowns and adapt them for Huntsville um, and that's a form of flattery right imitation is yes. flattery and so that's some of the ideas we've created on our own um, the downtown open for example I don't I don't know if there was ever a putt putt course around a downtown <laughs> might have been um, but Some of them we've adapted, like the night market and things like that, going to other night markets and other downtowns and saying, okay, how did they do this? What made it work? And adapting that. So will our night market, we didn't know what to expect. It's kind of like that first food truck rally. And then it opened and it took off. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because it had a lot of elements that were original to ours, but also our elements. I'd probably been to seven or eight different nighttime markets before that and I was like okay that looks like that works that mm-hmm. that layout that energy level that you know so that's how we do it we like to go to other places and try to find their best ideas and learn from those so looking at the growth that uh, downtown Huntsville has had and kind of the, the all these different things that are happening how do you think that it's affected other downtowns nearby such as Athens and, and Florence and Gunnersville and how do you think that that, that that will continue to affect those areas yeah, I know. Uh, hopefully it's helped them because uh, I know a lot of them have come over here from through all, uh, not just the 
the region, but throughout the Southeast, we've had people from outside the Southeast come in, uh, I'll give them walking tours or sit in the office and talk about, sometimes it's a single topic. How do you do your entertainment district? Yeah. How does that work? Otherwise it's just a general, Hey, what's working here and sharing those ideas. So, um, and, and, and to be quite honest, I enjoy learning things from downtown Athens and Gunnersville and Decatur and Madison, other things too. There's, there's, there's something to be learned from everything. Um, and so I think while we don't necessarily, you know, work on combined programs, uh, I'll go over and see what they're doing in downtown Athens and be like, Oh, I like how they're doing that programmatic thing or downtown Decatur or, you know, city Harbor is just such a great thing in downtown Gunnersville and mayor dollar and her team are doing such a great job. I'll go like, Oh boy, that's an interesting way they did that. So I think we've been sharing ideas. I know the downtown Gunnersville folks have asked us about the bike share, about the open container district. I went over there, the entertainment district. So, um, you know, collaboration is key. Yeah. And I, I, th I think it's, 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 it's super awesome just to see that. I mean, like my brother recently moved to Athens and we, I visited at downtown Athens for the first time. And it was just like, this is amazing. Like there's, there's so much potential there and it's just like waiting for like, it's, 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 it's a blank canvas almost. And they're doing so much right now just to kind of continue to add to that. And this, the atmosphere itself is so cool. How much of your success w with DHI would you contribute to your hard work over the last nine years? And how much would you contribute to being in the right place at the right time? Yeah, I mean that's a good question. It's I mean it's it's really hard to answer because it's 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 some of both. I mean the stage was set. The organization starting up in 2013 was set just the right time because so much of the growth in Huntsville, not just downtown but you know bringing in the large manufacturers and expanding the DOJ presence on the arsenal, so much of that growth fed into the growth of downtown, it brought in more people. And a lot of the people that are moving here were moving from different parts of the country that may have had strong downtowns. Mm -hmm. So um, that was very fortuitous. Uh, but it also, you know, is a testament to our staff and our board of directors that every day we wake up, our staff, Carla and Megan and the others before them, great interns, everyone that's worked with us, wake up every day trying to figure out what can we do today that makes our downtown more dynamic. And so I think a lot of hard work and creativity um, combined with some great timing for the rest of the growth. I don't think if Huntsville as a city wasn't growing, it'd be hard to grow your downtown. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the rest of the city would grow as, as dynamically if there wasn't a growing downtown as well. So I think it's mutually beneficial. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, is that kind of how you prioritize your day is kind of, I mean, I, obviously there's so much that you could to do. I mean, there's so much that's going on. There's so many new things that are being announced. It's, it, there, it can definitely become overwhelming. Is that kind of how you prioritize your day is by thinking of a, you know, a few different things that you can do today to make today better? Or do you just, or is, is it hard to kind of have the overwhelming of like, Hey, here's what the future is going to look like, but like really I need to live in the present. Is it tough for you to balance that? Um, for some reason, my brain works pretty well in doing both. So, um, I found, one of the helpful things I do is go take long walks around downtown. It, it helps to have Old Town and Twickenham. Just go for a walk or go for a run. And just that kind of allows you to clear your head and be thinking about those bigger picture things. Um, I use the term for downtown Huntsville Inc. because we're kind of the air traffic controllers of downtown. And when you think about what an air traffic controller does, they don't build the plane, buy the plane, book the plane, <laughs> or fly the plane, right? They just try to make sure all the planes land, take off, go through the airspace, successfully together. A pilot could ignore the air traffic controller. I mean, they don't have a way to override the pirate, but at their own peril. And But an air traffic controller has to think about the uh, that immediate landing, but also what are the different planes coming in from outside the area that we need to be aware of too. So that's that real combination of thinking about today, this is an important thing that we need to make sure we get right. But also don't get so focused on just what's happened in the next 12 hours of your day that you're not thinking about what's coming 12 months down the road. Yeah. So if, if anyone that's listening right now and they want to connect with DHI, either as their business and become a member, as well as the community to stay up to date with new events that are happening in and around downtown Huntsville, where's the best way to be connected? Yeah, two great ways. Go to downtownhuntsville.org and uh, you can find information about the districts we talked about, the trails we talked about, all the other establishments. Um, so downtownhuntsville.org is a great destination. And then on social media, um, our Instagram and our Facebook, our LinkedIn are really great um, platforms. We also have a YouTube channel. So those are typically downtown HSV. So downtownhuntsville.org, downtown HSV. 
Well, uh, thank you so much uh, for sitting down and talking with me today. It's been great learning more about your story as well as the story of DHI, and I continue to look forward to the success and the impact you will have in Huntsville for many more years to come. Great. It was a fun conversation. Thanks for the invitation.